Right, back to the paper and pen. So here's an example. Find a volume of solid revolution formed by rotating about the x-axis. So remember, volume of solid revolution formed by rotating about the x-axis. Remember the formula. The formula about the x-axis, v is pi into the integral of y squared dx. Okay, so about the x-axis, it's pi into the integral y squared dx. About the y-axis, it's pi into the integral of x squared dy. Okay? Uh, the area between the curve y equals sine x, okay? And the x-axis from x equals 0 to x equals pi. So these are the limits of our integral. So let's have a go at this one. So volume v, so v in this case, it's pi into the integral of y squared dx. So the limits of our integral are 0, the lower limit, and pi, the upper limit. And y we have, the equation of our curve is sine x. Okay, so... If we replace y equals sine x in this result, v therefore is pi into the integral between limit 0 and pi of y squared. So y is sine x squared with respect to x. Okay. So if I continue further along the line, so it's pi into the integral between limit 0 and pi, sine x squared is the same as sine squared x. Okay, so remember to integrate sine squared or cos squared, you need to use a double angle formula for cos. Okay, so to integrate sine squared x, we're going to be using a double angle formula for cos, and that formula that we're using is cos 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Okay, so here goes. So by using the fact that cos 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. So if we rearrange this, 2 sine squared x is 1 minus cos 2x. And if I divide by 2, sine squared x therefore is 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2 cos 2x. Okay, so remember to integrate sine squared or cos squared, you need to use a double angle uh, formula for cos. Okay, if you're unfamiliar in terms of integrating trigonometric functions, I did a video on the integration of trigonometric functions. I'll provide a link to that video in the description below. Okay, so be sure to check out the video if you haven't. So back to the example. So v is equal to pi integration limits are 0 and pi sine squared x we rearranged this identity we had half minus a half cos 2x and let's continue here so v is equal to pi now when we integrate half with respect to x it's x over 2 minus the half here and when you integrate cos it's plus sine so it's plus sine 2x divided by 2 okay between these limits 0 and pi what needs to be done now is to replace our limits in our solution here so let me continue on the reverse so v is equal to pi so the upper limit is pi, so when we replace pi here, this is what we're going to have. So we're going to have x, which is pi, over 2, minus sine 2 of x, so sine 2 of pi, divided by 4. So minus sine 2 of pi, divided by 4. 
minus the pi and let's replace the lower limit so the lower limit being zero so when I replace zero into the function we're gonna have zero over two minus sine two into x which is zero divided by four okay so in this case let's continue so sine of two pi as well as sine of zero these are standard results so sine of two pi is zero sine of zero is zero as well so when we continue these go to be pi into since sine of two pi is zero this term as a whole is zero so we're going to have pi over two left over and zero over two is zero sine of zero over four zero as well so we just have this term remaining which when we expand we're going to have pi squared over two okay units cubed as we're working out a volume okay so that is a solution to this volume related problem so remember we're working out the volume of solid revolution about the x-axis and that is why we're using the formula pi into the integral y squared dx okay because remember if it's about the y-axis it's pi into the integral x squared dy okay so that ends this example and that ends the video also so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy the video a like is very much appreciated and i hope to see you again thank you